Hi, uh, today we're going to be talking about westward expansion. That's one name for this topic. It's basically the territories that were added to the United States and the order that they were added and why they were added. Um, but there's another term that's often used to, to talk about this era, and that's manifest destiny. So you should uh, know and write down, I think there's a box on the map, or if you want to write it somewhere else, that's okay. Uh, manifest destiny. Here's what manifest destiny means. Um, manifest destiny is the idea that it was America's God-given right to expand from the Atlantic Ocean all the way across North America to the Pacific Ocean. The idea that it was America's God-given right for America to expand from the Atlantic Ocean all the way over to the Pacific Ocean. And that's manifest destiny. Okay, let's talk about the expansion of the United States. Well, the first part of the United States, and a lot of maps have this, and you may want to color this in a little differently. Along the eastern seaboard, we have the original 13 colonies, which became, shockingly, the original 13 states. So that's the very first bit of America that was added. And then at the Treaty of Paris of 1783, at the formal negotiations that end the, um, the, the American Revolution, England not only gives America the 13 colonies, but they also give America all of the land to this Mississippi River, all the way to the Mississippi River. So the U.S. at the time of the Treaty of Paris of 1783 actually covered all of the land um, really between the Mississippi River all the way east to the original 13 colonies. It did not include Florida and some areas down there and um, never included these Canadian areas. So that's that's the first place that you should label the original 13 colonies and the Treaty of Paris of 1783. Um, and then we have the next major area that's added, and that is the Louisiana Purchase. And that's added in 1803. Thomas Jefferson buys that from France, from Napoleon. He needed the money to um, fight Britain and, and everybody else that he was attacking. And so Louisiana Purchase is added in 1803. Next, we come to this little bit of area, um, and that is the Red River Basin. It's kind of at the top in between the original United States and the, um, the Louisiana Purchase. And so it's called the Red River Basin. It's a little small area. But it begins the start of the flat line. And actually, if you would look further, the U.S. loses some of the Louisiana Purchase to England as it goes across. But it starts drawing a straight line that is the border between the United States and British Canada. Next is Florida. Florida is added in 1819 through the adams onis Treaty. Um, and it, you know, I, I always compare Florida... Basically, Spain was losing control of its empire. Florida was part of its empire, so it did nothing. And the U.S. then said, hey, why don't you let us take that bit off of your hands there, Spain? And so um, the United States picked up Florida um, in 1819 through the adams onis Treaty. Next, we come to Texas annexation. So Texas had been part of the area that had broken away from Spain. And this is Texas was a bigger area than we think of Texas having today. And so for 10 years between 1836 and 1845, uh, it was its own country, uh, sometimes called the Lone Star Republic. And then in 1845, it, uh, it asked the U.S. to accept it or to annex, to add to is what um, annex means to add to. And so it was annexed by the United States in 1845, immediately setting off a war with Mexico. Um, but the U.S. was able to win the war and, and keep the land. Um, Oregon country. Up here in the far left-hand corner is Oregon country, added through a treaty with England in 1846. And then we go on to Mexican cession. That war that was started with the annexation of Texas ends with the United States getting uh, most of the southwestern lands in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which you should know as well, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ends the Mexican War and gives the United States this chunk of land, formerly known as the Mexican Cession, um, in 1848. In 
1852, the United States is working on building a transcontinental railroad, and they realize there's some mountains that dip way down here, so it'd be easier to build the railroad to the south of those mountains, so they add this area called the Gadsden Purchase, and uh, they, they think they're going to put a railroad through, notice it's 18, I said 1852, it doesn't go through till 1853, so the U.S., um, formally buys it then, and then the Civil War breaks out and they never build the railroad through. But modern day cities of like Tucson are in there. And it's always interesting to me that if you lived in Tucson, it's just a really quick jaunt down here to the ocean. Um, and we think of like Arizona as being a long way from the ocean, but it's, it's actually like two hours from Tucson or something like that. Uh, continuing on, the United States adds Alaska just after the Civil War in 1867. Um, got it from Russia. Uh, I think they pay $7.2 million for it. It's basically very cheap. Um, it was called Seward's Folly or Seward's Icebox. William Seward, uh, the Secretary of State, negotiated the sale and everybody thought he was an idiot. And then later on they found gold and oil there and everybody was like, smartest man in the world. Um, and then lastly, we had the last state uh, of Hawaii um, in 1898. So. Uh, these weren't states yet, but they eventually become states and they complete the expansion of the United States. Thank you.